Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. Live from Austin, Texas, broadcasting worldwide, it's Alex Jones. But we're going to, to uh, Pastor Chuck Baldwin here, but you notice they said, help the government deal with its biggest threat, we the people. And that government is above us, and we need to learn to serve them. No, we are the government here in the United States. That's what the, so I guess George Washington was of the devil to fight the corrupt king. I guess all the prophets in the Bible who rebuked the kings and stood up. I guess when John the Baptist went into Herod and said, you're of the devil. I guess Herod was the good one. And John the Baptist, he was the bad. I guess Christ saying no to governments was bad. I guess Paul was bad. According to our devil preachers, they are. Now, again, this book is so well written, so, so, so well documented, available at InfoWars.com, Romans 13. Pastor, great to have you here. I, I did that big intro here because I wanted people to see an example of how big an issue this is. What, what did you think of that little clip we just played? Yeah, that, that's incredible, and uh, I'm so glad that you introduced the subject by playing that. I know of pastors myself, uh, we have spoken, and they have showed me the materials that they receive at these uh, training centers. Uh, so the stuff that you're talking about, these closure response teams, that's, that's not hyperbole. That is actuality. It's reality. It's happening. Uh, they are trying to prepare pastors in America to uh, be the, the one who stands up in the pulpit in front of the congregation and encourages them to surrender their firearms and, if necessary, do whatever else the uh, federal government might deem necessary. Uh, regarding whatever emergency is declared. So this is exactly the reality that you're talking about. Uh, please continue, Pastor. Well, that's why Tim and I wrote the book. Uh, for decades and decades, uh, preachers have been indoctrinated in this uh, fallacious interpretation of Romans chapter 13. Obey the government no matter what. And this is such a problem. That coupled with the 501c3 tax exemption, status of the churches, I think is the uh, one-two whammy as to why the churches in America today are neutered. So Tim and I, Tim, as you know, is the constitutional attorney. He's an expert in the Constitution, and he and I collaborated together and wrote this book on Romans 13 because we just had to get the truth of the real meaning of Romans chapter 13, and not just Romans chapter 13, Alex, but the entire rest of Scripture. You know, when Paul penned Romans chapter 13, he was not introducing a new doctrine to the church. He was simply reiterating what had been stated throughout the Scripture's Old and New Testament. So we take the Bible, we go back into the Old Testament, we go through the New Testament, we quote the theologians and the philosophers of, of early America and beyond that, and we show that the historical teaching of Christianity has never been to obey the government no matter what. We believe that government is of God. We believe that good government is of God. We believe that we must uh, follow the, uh, the good principles that God has established in natural law that relates to all government, whether it's civil or family or, or business, uh, whatever it might happen to be. There's all kinds of government. But that each governing authority has a responsibility to God to obey the principles that God has established in his word, that no authority, even civil authority, is above the natural law principles of God. And so we go back into the scriptures, both testaments, hundreds of scripture references, philosophers and theologians of, of early America and beyond that, and we prove conclusively that the 2,000-year history of Christianity has always taught that government itself must submit to the fundamental natural law principles of God. And when it doesn't, it is the duty and the responsibility of men to resist that evil government and to stand for those sacred principles which God has enshrined in his word. And that's why we have the famous quote by the founders, resistance to tyrants is obedience to God. Exactly. Ben Franklin said that, and, and, and that's why he could say that, because he understood these natural law principles that I'm talking about, as did Jefferson and the rest of the Founding Fathers. And if we don't get the preachers of America to shake off this, this asinine interpretation of Romans chapter 13 to obey the government no matter what, we are going to uh, repeat the fate 
and the destiny of Germany, as you just mentioned in your monologue opening this series. Uh, because that is exactly what he did. The, the Nazi regime uh, took Romans chapter 13. They, they created entire messages around that fallacious interpretation, sent it out to the churches and the pastors, and then they regurgitated it in their pulpits in Nazi Germany. The net result was 14,000 evangelical churches in Germany when, it, when, when the, uh, Hitler was rising to power. Of those 14,000 evangelical churches, 800 stood against him. 800, 5% of 14,000 tried to resist. The others, of the 95%, went right along with, with Hitler and, of course, the rest is history. But according to the preachers we played earlier, you should have gotten on your knees and worshipped Hitler or Stalin or Pol Pot or anybody. I mean, it's just asinine. I'm not a preacher, but I know Sunday school. The whole Bible is about resisting tyrants and Pharaoh and everybody else. I mean, Absolutely. it's ridiculous. I mean, Absolutely. I mean, how do preachers with a straight face say, well, go ahead and go along with abortion. The government wants it. We're the government. Yeah, well, I, I, several reasons as to why. I think some of them, uh, it's a matter of, of uh, cowardice and convenience, quite frankly. You know, it, many of them have become glorified politicians. They're climbing the corporate ladder. They don't want to make waves, and they don't want to cause controversy. You know, they've got their pay, their paycheck, they've got their retirement, their 401K, their insurance premiums are paid. Yep. You know, they're, they're sitting very comfortably. And they don't want to jeopardize that. And, of course, it's that it's that careerism and cover your rear end and don't have any real values that is going to destroy the country and going to destroy everybody's future and career. That's what all these go-along, get-alongs don't get. America's been great because we did resist tyranny. We were far from perfect, but we resisted to the greatest extent, and it created incredible blessings. And now, as soon as we ignore what America was founded on, all of our blessings are draining out. Exactly. And I, I think the key is the pulpit. I really do. And that's why Tim and I wrote this book. Uh, I'm so glad you're offering it. It, it, is, it is absolutely fundamentally critical that Christians, if we can get the layman, if we can get the, the, the church leaders of America to understand the true meaning of Romans chapter 13 and begin insisting that their pulpits teach the truth relative to Romans 13, we can see a difference in this country. The churches have the power to change the direction of the country. But as long as this fallacious interpretation of Romans 13 is prevalent, nothing is going to be done. That's why Tim and I wrote Romans chapter 13, The True Meaning of Submission. Well, you're, you're right, and, and, and that's why I'm promoting this book. I see it as a key weapon of truth against the corruption of the globalist to at least educate people in the churches and the pastors that can be reached with this information. I've talked to some people that go in and ask their pastor, even of many years in some cases, about the clergy response team, and suddenly the preacher calls them behind closed doors, starts asking them questions, tells them, don't go down that road. I don't want to have to report you. I mean, these preachers think they're living in East Germany or in communist China during the Christian purges to sit there and say, I don't want to have to report you as if it's illegal to say, hey, you're not in a secret a relationship with the government, are you? I mean, it's so bizarre that how these preachers get into the role of classic spies. You know, yeah. I mean, just like they have the preacher and the mayor are the bad guys and are the collaborators in Red Dawn, which is fictitious. That was made back in the early 80s. You know, everybody hissed at him in the movie theater when I was a little kid going to see that with my dad. I mean, everybody, even as a kid, I knew the bad guy was the person, you know, spying on the citizens. And, and, and now they're like, you better be quiet. Yes, I do work for Homeland. How do you know about this? Like they get off on, I have secret meetings with Homeland Security and I, I spy on my flock. And I've talked to high-level Baptist preachers here in town after some of their members told me about it. And they hand out at the big churches sheets saying, don't even discuss politics or issues at church barbecues at the park or, or or in the pews because of separation of church and state. But then Obama, as you know, two weeks ago, put out a film uh, calling on, quote, 
uh, African Americans for Obama and in it, he says, I want team leaders and election leaders in your churches. Turn your churches into engines of my reelection campaign. Now, he knows he can do that because there really is no separation of church and state. Congress can make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Government can't get involved, but churches can do whatever they want. So he knows it's a buffalo telling churches you can't believe uh, politically involved, but they selectively threaten the 501c3 while at the same time using the churches for their own aims. But how did they get preachers to be such incredible agents uh, of government? Boy, that, that is a great question. You know, I was, I was very involved in, in the moral majority, as you know, back in the, in the 80s. Uh, Dr. Jerry Falwell asked me to be the executive director of the Florida Moral Majority, which I was. And I, I, I really saw the inside of all of that. And uh, there was a uh, progression that took place, or an ingression, how you want to say it, that took place during that time. I, I think what happened was, and this, this is what I believe, in, having experienced it uh, firsthand and seeing the inside of how all that worked and how it developed, Alex, I really believe what happened was the, the preachers and the Christian leaders, the so-called religious right in America during that time, were so desirous to obtain a seat at the table. And that's, that's a word that, I mean, that's a phrase that, that I heard at a, at a national press conference I was president at in Washington, D.C., when Gary Bauer actually said that. All we want is a seat at the table. Well, they got their seat at the table. And once they tasted uh, the benefits and, and the luxuries, of being able to sit at the king's table, uh, they made a decision that that's what they wanted and they were not going to give it up no matter what. And the principles and convictions that drove them to get involved and to try and make a difference in our country back there in the late 70s and the early 80s became a desire to seek the king's benefit. And as a result, since then, the government quickly found the politicals, the power elite, quickly figured out that these preachers and Christian leaders could be easily bribed through a variety of, of methods, phone calls from the White House. Uh, invitations to private dinners. Well, I was about to say, Pastor, I'm glad you're giving us this inside baseball. I saw the city council sell out for 50 plus million dollars to help build a Formula One track with our tax money just because they got invited, uh, reportedly in the future, to sit in the box with the rich people. I mean, literally, a lot of times people sell out just to be invited to the party, not even for money. It, it, it's so pathetic what you just pointed out. And But then now they're getting money under Bush and now under Obama. Right. It's totally unconstitutional. Faith-based initiative, it turns out, secret, you know, vans, big screen TVs, AV equipment. They even get small churches to sell out for a few thousand dollars of government money to churches. That's totally illegal. Can you speak to that? Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. I, I, you and I both railed against that back when uh, G.W. Bush first introduced that, this whole faith-based initiative program, which took, uh, you know, uh, taxpayer dollars and gave them to, directly to the churches. And I, as soon as I found out that was going on, I recognized immediately what was happening. This was nothing more than a bribe to silence the churches and to get their cooperation in whatever it was that the government was doing at the time. And, and you're right. I mean, they're doing it for their Christian schools, their, their private schools. They're doing it for many of their so-called missionary projects, et cetera. They're getting uh, faith-based initiative monies. And as a result of that, they're not going to say anything contrary uh, to whatever the government would wish them to do because they are getting a direct benefit from the government uh, for being uh, uh culpable in all of this. And that's state-run media. I mean, that's right out of China and Russia. I mean, under communism, you still had churches. They were just government-funded and certified. Pastor Chuck Baldwin's our guest. Folks, the book is Romans 13, The True Meaning of Submission. I think it dovetails nicely with Behind the Green Mask, You and Agenda 21. Both these books are key for pastors, uh, members of your flock. Uh, the fight is going on for the heart and soul in these churches. Take your churches back. Not just take your states, counties, and cities back. Nullify the globalist brainwashing at your church level today. Get the books at Infowars.com.